Hello and welcome to yet another video and in this video I would like to talk about this camera right here. It's the Sony a7 IV. Yes, it's another Sony camera and I have it paired with the uh, 51.4 right here which is still a good lens even though the 1.2 is much better but for what I do the 1.4 is still good as well. But this camera essentially only came out the last quarter of 2021 which is not that long ago and it's nowhere near as long as pretty much most of my other cameras from my camera thought videos that I made in the past whether it's the DSLR or the mirrorless cameras and since mid of last year I've been pretty much enjoying using this camera and it's just yeah really fun and reliable camera to use as well of course it's not like my main system like my R5 the R6 and the original R but it still has a lot of great features and great functions that I think even nowadays you guys will still find it quite an attractive option to go for and in this video I'll be sharing you my thoughts on this camera based on how I shoot so without further ado let's Let's get into the video. So the Sony a7 IV, now this camera has been out since the last quarter of 2021 as mentioned earlier. It has a few design upgrades from you know the higher up models down to this model and also it has some upgrades compared to the a7 III as well. And there are some things that I really love about this camera but there are some things that I also don't really like about this camera as well and I'll be discussing about that in this video. So in this video as usual just like in any of my other my thought camera videos I'll be dividing this video into three different sections. The first one is the uh, ergonomics and usability, followed by the image quality for both photography and video, and then followed by my conclusion, what I think about it, why I recommend it, and why I don't. So let's first dive into the ergonomics and the usability. So the overall ergonomics of this camera is actually quite nice. I quite like the grip, I quite like the size, I quite like the weight of this camera. It's not too heavy, it's not too light. In fact, it's actually quite balanced with many of the heavier lenses as well, whether it's the uh, 7200 or the 51.4 or the 85. 1.4 things like that it actually balances it out quite well where it's a little bit weird is actually the grip design here I know I said the ergonomics is great but you know after holding it for let's say two or three hours in an event shoot things like that it will start to actually hurt the wrist a little bit because like the edges here are quite sharp and the grip is actually quite narrow. I understand the grip design that it has to, you know, give enough room between bigger lenses and this grip and also yeah, it's it's still I can see all the design curves and functionalities, but in the same time it makes your hand want it to hold it one way that Sony designed it to hold, if that makes sense, which means that over a long period of time it really just starts to hurt your wrist a little bit because of all the weight that you have to hold. Whereas if you're coming from systems like Pentax, Nikon, Canon, you know, those grips are really solid as well and they're also really comfortable to hold over a longer period of time. It looks boring, but it's just, oh, I know I have a grip on, but it's just, it already feels much more comfortable just holding the uh, top part of the uh, R6 right here. And, you know, having worked with the uh, 28 to 70 F2, the 85 1.2 as well from Canon, those grips are definitely much more comfortable to hold for a longer period of time. And at first I thought it was just something that's very subjective, but after I heard so many complaints and people switching from Sony back to Canon purely because of the ergonomics, I'm I'm believing that it's actually more more objective than subjective now that Sony's grip is actually although getting better and also feels solid it's just not good to hold it for a long period of time especially if you're shooting events concerts weddings and what have you so I definitely feel that right there and you know I'm not the only one who actually shares this particular suffering if I can put it that way but you know I'm not using this camera as my main camera so it's not as much of a problem for me as let's say um, some of my photographer friends who are actually using it as their main system anyway moving on to the next point is the button layout I really love the button layout of this camera even though it doesn't have all of the buttons that I wish that it would have but it has a lot of customizable buttons which is nice and some of the dedicated buttons are still customizable to your um, liking to the features that you want to access so you can still customize and reprogram them in the menu which is great 
and also the buttons they also feel very nice and big so what I like about at least the top half of the camera the buttons feels very tactile they feel responsive the dials don't turn a lot by accident and when you're working in such a cold environment with thick gloves the buttons are still big enough that you can actually press them it's just the second half of the camera um, the bottom half pretty much the buttons get smaller the wheel gets also tinier that it becomes a little bit harder to operate with gloves on especially in super cold temperature where you know you're working with thicker gloves anyway so yeah just watch out for that if you're working a lot in cold environments um, but otherwise I really love the feeling of the buttons I really think that with a newer design of their cameras it also feels much more logically arranged than let's say the older versions of Sony cameras and that is something that is you know to be appreciated about because Sony has always been known for you know not designing such a, an ergonomic camera and having weird button layout things like that but with this camera everything is just much more logically arranged and that is something I really love now moving on still staying on the back of course which is the screen itself I really love how solid the screen feels because um, with the previous a7 III a7 II things like that um, the screen feels very flimsy even though it's a tilt up screen but those screens are very thin and they're very flimsy and whereas this one there's a nice kind of um, weight to actually pulling it out which gives you a little bit more confident that you're not going to be breaking the screen easily because that was the feeling I had when I was using the a7 III a7 II things like that but glad that they actually um, upgraded the feeling of the display that being said the display even though it has a really good color accuracy very nice refresh rate and also very detailed display but when you're working in direct sunlight um, you, I just wish that the display is a bit brighter not brighter in the way that you can adjust the brightness to the max brightness and then you'll see everything but I wish that the medium brightness would be much brighter and would be able to actually look at the screen while shooting in like a midday sunlight simply because there is a huge difference to just you know having a screen that's naturally bright and having a screen that you have to boost the brightness to the full brightness because having a screen that's naturally bright you can actually judge your exposure much more accurately judge your details judge your colors much more accurately when you're working in such a bright daylight condition whereas if you're having a screen that's dim and you have to boost the brightness up to like the full or almost full brightness when working in you know super bright daylight or super bright light environment your exposure will not be as accurate because by brightening up those screen settings it will also boost um, the uh, exposure a little bit or actually boost the look of the exposure a little bit and then you'll notice that once you import the images back onto the computer it's actually very dim so yeah there's a huge difference between two types so I just wish that the screen would be much brighter but where there's a huge improvement is actually the actual screen inside this viewfinder, this electronic viewfinder. The refresh rate has been much better than the a7 III, especially when working in low light condition. Because with the a7 III, when working in like low light condition, um, there was a little bit of lag. There was definitely more lag and also it felt a little bit more choppy when um, panning around or trying to follow subjects in low light environments whereas with this camera the viewfinder actually works really nicely when trying to compose and also focus on subjects in low light environment as well so I really love that about this particular viewfinder and the refresh rate is great and the color vibrancy is also great especially compared to the a7 III I feel like the vibrancy on this one is much more accurate than the um, more dull looking um, viewfinder within the a7 III so that is also very good uh, moving on to the next point which is the port on the side well I really love how Sony designed the port on the a7 IV simply because I know I complain about the port that it's not being on the same port with the uh, microphone and the headphone jack but this one at least one is right underneath the other so you have the mic on the top and the headphone on the bottom and if you don't need the headphone you can just close it it's pretty tidy whereas on the a7c the mic is on the top and the uh, headphone is way at the bottom of the camera underneath the SD card slot I find that that was actually quite messy I understand the design decision why they had to do it like that but in the same time it was too messy for me and I really love this layout and one more thing that I really love about the port is this port right here, the HDMI port. It's more of a normal size HDMI port, which is really nice. And compare that to, let's say, my 
Fuji system or my Canon system, they all have micro HDMI port and it really sucks because those cables break so easily because the port is so small and sometimes um, the cable just gets loose and just breaks easily whereas with this you know more of a normal size HDMI port it's actually very nice it allows you to actually finally keep your HDMI cable so that you can actually work with the same cable over and over and over again and use the same accessory over and over again so yeah it's really nice but I also like the overall layout of the ports in general that it's really nicely thought out you know which port is more important than the other and it's just laid out very nicely as well so yeah that's pretty nice and moving on to the other side you have a dual card slot whereas um, you know the, the top one is for a CF Express card as well so that's also very nice and yeah you can just put those two cards inside I just wish it's CF Express type B and not type A because type B is much cheaper and also faster in the same time um, but that would also mean that the port itself would have to be a little bit or the slot itself would have to be a little bit bigger as well so that's the downside and now moving on to the bottom part of the camera you find this really nice that series type of battery and it's just much more accurate and also much more reliable than the previous type of battery that Sony was using in their, you know, A7R2, A7 II, A7 III, and so on and so forth. Those batteries, though they were really small, nice and compact, their battery life wasn't really as good, obviously, but they were also not reliable and also not accurate when it comes to battery life representation. So sometimes you use 50%, but then the last 50% is, you know, just gets drained up very, very quickly. So you have to, you know, plan your shots really wisely and everything, and you have to, well, you had to really carry, let's say five or six batteries in your bag if you want to go through like a whole day of, let's say travel shooting, things like that. So yeah, having this battery you can only carry like let's say one or two other spare batteries in your camera bag and that's it you'll be done for the day but yeah it's just a much better improvement onto this camera and it also gives this camera a much bigger and more comfortable grip than let's say the a7r2 that i have here because the battery is the smaller battery type down here so the grip is indeed a little bit smaller as well but I actually do like the size of the a7r2 much more than a7 IV so you gain what you lose you lose some you gain some um, so yeah now moving on to the front of the camera now um, what I really like about this front part of the camera is you see that the shutter curtain uh, they finally added the uh, shutter curtain after the Canon EOS R classic um, <laughs> Had it there for you know a couple of years before Sony finally rolled out with this feature But even though there is a shorter curtain right there to protect the sensor There's something that I don't like about Sony cameras and one of the main reasons that prevents me from using it as my main photography camera to my Canon is it still attracts dust much much easier than let's say with all the other system and I don't understand that because let's say when I'm using Nikon's camera or Fuji cameras, you know, those sensors are made by Sony and um, the design is not that much different either, like where they place the sensor. And yet those cameras attracts way less dust than this camera does. And, you know, sometimes if I'm shooting a portrait uh, session and I would come home with, let's say, between one and a half, um, sorry, 1,500 pictures to 2,000 or 3,000 pictures, if I see dust spots, it's always on that particular spot, which means I would have to go through with all of those images, obviously out of those thousands of images, I might deliver just 500 or 600 images or sometimes even 200 images, depending on how much redundancy I have and also how much just in case shots I, I've taken. But anyway, it just takes so much time to just clean up all of those dust spots on the images because the sensor just attracts a lot of dust and it's just a lot of time consuming. And I just don't want to be, you know, spending that extra time per images just, you know, to delete off or correct all of those dust spots, things like that. Yeah, and I just really don't know why they just so much dust on um, Sony cameras. Well, on the sensors within Sony cameras. So I think that Sony has to do something about it because again, it's not really a problem when it comes to Fuji cameras that uses Sony sensors or Nikon cameras that uses Sony sensors. And it's definitely never has been a problem with my Canon cameras. I never really had to clean the sensor, maybe actually once a year, but that's, you know, 
mandatory and I usually like to clean the sensors once a year anyway but with Sony cameras I'm talking about once a week and that's too many times I I really can just you know do other things than just cleaning the sensor at least once a week with Sony cameras especially the a7 IV here it's it's weird I understand with the a7c and also the a7r2 because the shutter curtain doesn't close down but with this camera yeah, I think Sony has to do something a bit more with this camera. But anyway, now moving on to the next point, which is still the sensor and the shutter, which is the frames per second. This camera can shoot at 10 frames per second mechanically, which is great. Don't ask me how fast it can shoot um, electronically, simply because I don't use electronic shutter. Um, even with my R5, R6, or even when I'm using the A1 or the Z9, I don't use electronic, well, okay, the Z9, you can kind of have to use the electronic shutter, but with the A1, I don't. And yeah, I just don't trust electronic shutter yet. And even with the Z9, sometimes in super complex artificial lighting, you will be able to see certain part of banning as well. And that is just not good. I just want to eliminate as much flaw or as much problems as I can right from the start and um, yeah for that it's just I've been just pretty much keeping with the mechanical shutter and also I like that you know feedback of having that mechanical shutter versus the electronic shutter that I don't get any real feedback apart from maybe like if you enable the digital shutter sound then yeah but in the same time I still prefer that mechanical shutter of course in certain environments let's say if you're photographing some sort of conference or some sort of meetings that are very important or some sort of like silent concert things like that then it's still nice to have a camera that's really quiet so this camera is good enough to you know photograph some still shots in low light condition or some still shots in medium kind of artificially light situations but in the same time if there's a lot of complex lighting artificial lighting in there this camera will show a lot of banning and i just don't want to get into it and also there will be a little bit of flaring in some shots as well like weird sensor flaring kind of similar to what you saw with the problem of the um Nikon's D5500 or the uh, D750 as well. But yeah, if you have no choice but to use the electronic shutter, it will actually do a good enough job of actually keeping your images together and you still will be able to clean up certain noise or certain banning later in post. Should you wish to do so, just be careful not to push it too much. Uh, that's what I'll say. But otherwise, the sensor is really good and also the autofocusing system from the sensor is also very nice. It's very sticky. It will be able to actually notice the subject before the uh, sensor is able to focus on the subject though, regardless of lens. So that is something that I'm personally kind of puzzled with because, um, for example, with Canon system, they don't always recognize the subject as quickly as the Sony, but what they'll do much more reliably and more accurately is track on that particular subject and also, you know, become much more sticky in terms of um, having that accurate focusing um, system on those subjects. Whereas with Sony, it can be very sticky, but uh, when you come home, not every image will be in focus. Sometimes it's just a hair out of focus and that's a little bit annoying because it knows that the subject is there, but it's just not always able to, you know, track as accurately as the uh, Canon system can. And also what the Canon system does better is uh, when working with, um, let's say, under different complex contrast patterns, um, the Canons will be able to stick onto those subjects with much more complex contrast patterns than the Sony will be able to. So yeah, just you know, take it for what it is. It is still a great autofocusing system in here and you can still tweak a little bit in the menu, but yeah, just be careful and be patient because just because it actually recognizes the actual subject doesn't mean that it's gonna be sharp. Just be patient, give it a little bit of time and also just refocus if you have to so that the system can just reaffirm that it's actually in focus things like that Whew. now onto the next point which is the software side of things which is the menu system now the menu system in this camera is actually finally a good menu system it is still very time consuming it is still inefficient in a very sony style and fashion of course but it's been much improved from the previous system like the a7r2 the a7c because this menu is actually much more organized but in the same time it still has some of the sony's weird naming systems so if you're coming from pentax fuji canon nikon 
Some menus can seem to be named in a really weird way. For example, on Canon Nikon system, where it would just be called beep, it's called sound signal on here. That's just, you know, the basics. But anyway, um, <laughs> it's something that puzzles me a little bit sometimes. But yeah, it's still quite a nice menu compared to the previous menu. And you can get used to it. You can um, access the menu much faster once you get used to it as well. That being said, if you're coming from Pentax, Canon, and Nikon system, for the same time that you can learn, get used to all of those menus combined, you would still be learning how to get used to this menu because it is that it's still inefficient, but you know, it is much more efficient than the previous menu system. And I'm sorry if you're hearing like the construction sound outside, some neighbor just moved in and they, they just decided to be really loud. So I'm really apologizing for that. Anyway, um, moving on to the next point. I really love the NFC or the uh, Wi-Fi feature on this camera because it is actually kind of fast when you're actually transferring um, image files from this camera onto the uh, smartphone. Albeit the actual app itself, it's not always as reliable as let's say the Canon and the Fuji um, uh, camera connect app or just the app that they use to connect to the camera to download images or to just tether shoot with the uh, um, camera and the phone. So yeah, just keep that in mind if you're planning to do that. It's just, it's not as reliable on this camera as with the uh, Canon and the uh, Fuji system. It is somewhat on par with the uh, Nikon system, just that the Nikon system will still be a bit more user friendly, if that makes sense. But that is just getting more to the subjective point as well. Uh, but it is definitely much faster than the uh, Fuji app, that's for sure, when transferring the files. So that's also very nice because Fuji is way too slow. <sighs> anyway, um, yeah, that's pretty much it about uh, this camera in terms of hardware, usability, the ergonomics, the software, things like that. And now moving on to the image quality. And the image quality on this camera is great. I really love the new color science of the Sony cameras because the skin tone is much more improved. And that is something that really matters to me who shoots a lot of portraits anyway. And also, yeah, the blues and the greens aren't as dull as before, which is nice when doing a lot of um, travel photography. That being said you know I've never really have shot anything professional with this particular camera so my image samples will just be you know just from like my normal trips here and there it's nothing professional let's say from the 5d mark 3 5d mark 4 or the um, r5 r6 r things like that but you know just looking at, at the uh, color tones and also looking at the uh, histograms, looking at the graphs, things like that, um, within Lightroom, of course, uh, they look really nice and the colors finally respond nicely to um, the individual colors when editing. So it's really great and it's definitely saving a lot of time, especially that um, improved skin tone of the uh, color signs and the color reproduction of this sensor. So that's actually really nice. And I also really love how it handles you know, from highlight to low light. I've always complained about how Sony cameras, even though they have very good dynamic range, which this camera has really good dynamic range as well, but previous Sony cameras has always had this harsh roll off into the highlights and shadows that it's somewhat unnatural. But, you know, with this camera, it's much, much more natural and it's just much more pleasing to the eyes. And it's just great when you don't have to spend a long time or a lot of time in post-processing, processing something that all the other brands can do naturally already, whereas, you know, Sony still had to catch up. And with this particular camera, because of the roll offs into the highlights and shadows are much more natural looking. It's just, it's a great camera. And I, I, I cannot um, say good things enough about this particular improvement of this sensor. That being said, of course, it's still not Nikon, Canon and Pentax, whereas, you know, those color signs in terms of, especially in terms of skin tones are much better than the Sony. But I'm just saying that this is more natural. It's definitely workable. And it's, yeah, if you're photographing a lot of, um, complex skin tones, this camera will be able to actually produce a much nicer rendition of those complex skin tones. Whew. So yeah, um, the moraine aliasing on this camera has also been improved. It is still there when you're really photographing super complex patterns, but it's been much more improved than the uh, previous Sony cameras, which is a huge welcome improvement because the previous Sony cameras has always been very bad at Morian aliasing in my opinion, but um, you know the uh, a7c and the a7 uh, IV <laughs> um, Definitely improved it quite a lot and now to the next point of the image quality Which is the low light performance the low light performance on this camera is actually Pretty good. It's pretty solid. 
Although I wouldn't really want to use it over ISO 3200 because any ISO over 3200 settings, I find it a little bit too noisy for me and also the saturation, the vibrancy also decreases dramatically, well too much for me as well. So I wouldn't really use it, especially for professional work, I wouldn't use it anywhere higher than 3200. But you know if you're just photographing family, friends and just documenting your trips, you can of course just go to ISO 4000 and that would still be usable. And uh, yeah, otherwise there's not much complaint to this camera, it's just... It's, it's typical Sony. Um, the uh, dynamic range is great, the low light is great, the color reproduction of this newer sensor and also newer color science is also great. Um, the color depth is really nice and the roll off into both highlights and shadows is also very natural and that is just something that's very nice out of the a7 IV. Now onto the uh, video quality, the video side of things. A lot of things from what I said about photography part actually applies to video part as well because the color science in video on this camera is really nice. Of course, you will still have to tweak it a little bit because it still seems a little bit dull compared to, let's say, the Canon and Nikon's color science in video. But I guess, you know, if you're putting a lot of LUTs on here or manipulating your images a lot anyway, then, you know, having the natural picture style on this camera is actually pretty good for that as well. The files are actually still robust enough to, you know, do some basic color editing, color grading to it. Oh, and also back to photography, the files are also really good for manipulating and also post-processing if that's really something that you really love to do to your images. And uh, now back into the video side of things. Um, even though the bitrate isn't really that high, but it's high enough that it's also able to handle quite a little bit of um, semi-rough uh, color editing, color correcting, things like that. Um, what is more emphasized on this part in the video part is actually in the moray and aliasing department. So in photography, it's not so much of a problem, but in video, anything that causes moray and aliasing in photography will be much more emphasized in video. So just watch out for that as well, because the sensor is still not good as eliminating those moray and aliasing and will make it more pronounced than in photography mode. So yeah, just keep that in mind. But otherwise, the color sign the color reproduction, the color depth is very good out of this camera. Well, straight out of the camera, actually. And yeah, it's evident that, you know, I'm actually able to, you know, use this camera instead of my R6 as my YouTube camera since last December because, yeah, I, I managed to trust the Sony system a lot more when it comes to color signs as well, so that actually says a lot. That being said, my Canon cameras are still going to be my professional go-to cameras because I don't get dust spots on them and I like their color signs much more. That being said, this camera is still very good in terms of color signs, color depth, and color reproduction. Whew. So yeah, there's that. And um, I also like how the onboard, um, what's it called? Onboard sound system. Mm. Right, the onboard amp, the preamp in this camera, it's actually quite nice and clean compared to the previous cameras. So I actually don't need to use the external recorder when I'm filming my online courses anymore. So it's just, yeah, it's very nice and I can just um, rely my wireless mic on this camera or just plug in any sound system into this camera and just rely the um, rely on the uh, internal preamp to actually give out a really nice and clean audio file as well. So yeah, it's just less work and less step to, you know, having to synchronize all the sound system, all the sound levels within the editing program. It just eliminates that. So that's pretty good. It just makes the workflow much easier as well. Now, of course, if you're running like let's say a uh, broadcasting company, you will want to have your own external um, recorder, of course, but if you're just working like one or two man um, team, then having such a nice preamp inside this camera is a much welcoming feature to have. So yeah, that's it for the uh, video side of things. Oh, and for the video, I know this is more of like a hardware thing, but I really like how there's this um, dial up here switching between the photography and the video mode and also a quick um, video settings as well. So yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, now onto my conclusion. To conclude, this camera is 
a very nice camera to have. It's definitely very good um, at producing results for both photography and video. It's also a very fun camera to use and the camera that will actually allow you to take um, to so many different locations simply because it is a tough camera. It is also a very small size camera that a lot of people don't take it seriously as well. So it allows you to actually capture more images during your trip as well. So that's actually quite nice. And this camera also has a really nice weather seal to it. I've taken it through rain storm, dust storms, and also through heat, and also um, heat waves here in Europe pretty much, and also through extreme cold environments, and it proved to actually survive. What I don't like about it though is the build quality. It is very cheaply built, um, even though it feels solid, but it is very cheaply built because, for example, the first two weeks of having this camera, this dial actually already broke in half after dropping onto the sofa from 30 centimeters height. And um, yeah, this is what I really hate about this dial because once it breaks in half, in order to get it replaced, you have to replace the entire skull of it. And you know, like with my Canon system, I am able to get things either fixed or replaced within 24 to 48 hours. Whereas with the Sony here in Northern Europe, you have to wait weeks for it. And you know, especially with a very common camera like this, where a lot of things do go wrong as well. And a lot of people do send it to services, spare parts are harder to come by and it's just, yeah, what I like about previous Sony designs is, let's say look, the A7R2 or even the A7C that's filming me right now. Um, there is like some sort of like um, protection above the dial and you can actually roll that. Uh, and I like that feature much more because it actually protects the, di the dial. So what I did with this dial was just pretty much super glue it back together and then add a protective sticker up here, which, you know, it does help. Um, <laughs> But yeah, nobody noticed the difference anymore and it, it works as a dial, but I'm just saying yeah the build quality even though it is a tough camera, but They definitely sheep out on the actual build quality of this camera that being said the weather sealed definitely has been improved compared to the previous uh, cameras, so Yeah, take it for what it is. It is still a good camera. Just yeah on that side, but yeah anyway, um Overall, it is a great camera. It is reliable. I love the autofocusing system. I love the color science. I love the ability to actually, you know, shoot at 10 frames per second. And I love the ability that uh, you can actually record without any time limit and bypass the overheating. So that's actually pretty good. Um, the uh, detail of the files, whether it's in both photography or video mode, they're very robust, um, at least to what I use it for. So that's also pretty good. And this camera overall, it's just a very nice, efficient, tough little camera. Yes, the menu system is still cumbersome to use, albeit much more improved than the previous Sony menu system. But yeah, you just have to kind of get used to it. I think overall, if you can get past the certain flaw or certain downside, you will actually be able to enjoy this camera. For me personally, what keeps me from using it as a main camera, like, or at least, you know, as main as my Canon camera, like alongside my Canon camera is one, um, the sensor attracts a lot of dust for what I use, which actually makes it really difficult to always correct and, you know, process a lot of the images if I would actually take um, pictures of the event things like that and come home with a lot of images then you know it's just extra time that I don't want to get into just for cleaning up the dust things like that or the features like the autofocusing system don't get me wrong it's really good and it's very nice but compared to my Canon system even though this sometimes recognizes the subject before my Canon system it's nowhere near as accurate as my Canon system, even after tweaking within the menu system. It's just not able to keep up and you know stay as accurately in focus throughout the sequence. So yeah, that is something that you know is keeping me from using this alongside my Canon system. I'm not trying to compare to the Canon system, but I'm just trying to create like a point of reference of where I'm coming from, things like that. But otherwise it is a great camera and it is a camera that you can really rely on and get quality results out of. And I would highly recommend 
anyone to give it a try or just anyone who's serious into getting into Sony system to give this camera a try because it is still a nice and solid camera and even if the a7r um, whatever is out or if the a7 V is out this camera would still be a solid option to go for the battery life is good the performance is there it's kind of like master of none but jack of all trade just like what I said about the r5 and the r6 as well because <sighs> It doesn't do, like, it's it's not specialized in one specific thing, but it does all the general field of photography, all the general disciplinary photography very nicely and very well. So, yeah, and the results you get out of it is, as I repeated many times already, very nice as well. Whew, so, yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you can actually gain something from this video and actually found it somewhat helpful or beneficial to what you want. And also, yeah, if you have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to also leave them down in the uh, comment section down below as well. I will do my best to get to you guys. And yeah, I know that there are a lot of features that I really haven't covered. But again, this is just pretty much purely based on how I shoot with this camera. So it's just pretty much a my thought video rather than a review video, as mentioned much earlier in the video already. So yeah, because there are so many review videos out there already and I just don't want to be part of those crowd. I just wanted to share part of uh, what I feel about this camera and also um, yeah, just based on my user experience with it, simply because some experience could be useful to some of you guys, I don't know. So that's why I'm actually creating all of these videos and also just, yeah, sharing my thought with you guys on some of the cameras that I use. <sighs> Anyway, if you need a free photography guidebook for beginners, it's absolutely for free on my website. The link is down in the description section below. It's absolutely for free. Just click and download. No need to submit your email address, nothing, and I will not bombard you with any newsletter nonsense. Otherwise, I thank you all very much for watching. Stay safe, have fun shooting. Till next time, bye for now.